Welcome to Organizational Behavior, the module that we're going to be tackling specifically today within the space of organizational behavior is that of management modules or management styles, if you prefer. I'm Dr. Alan Bogard. I have a question for you right at the outset of the session, and it's this. What is your recipe for management? Typically, we all default to one particular style, and especially when the heat is on or there's a lot of pressure or time is of the essence, we typically revert to something that we know, something that we practiced in, and leverage one management style against the situation. And I think we'll recognize that that's not always the most appropriate thing to do. Here are our outcomes for today's session. By the end of the session, you'll be able to differentiate between each of the management schools of thought. And in terms of the case study, what we're going to be exploring is how we're able to identify the right management school of thought for the right situation, take it into account the advantages and the disadvantages of each style or each approach. Before I get into the various management modules and the various styles, I want to ask you a question. Think of a moment in your life when you've reported to somebody or you've had somebody lead you or manage you. It could have been a prefect, a, a, a high school teacher. But think for a moment about somebody that managed you well. What was it that has now led you to believe that in fact that person managed you or led you well? What were the things? What were the indicators? What did they do? What did they say? that made you feel that they were in fact leading you well? Was it things like they understood you, they were fair, perhaps it was because they listened, perhaps it was because they listened but they also made reasonable recommendations, perhaps they helped you explore a situation and find your own pathway through it rather than just suggest a course of action that you should be taking. But I also want you to think for a moment about somebody who you perhaps felt mismanaged you, who didn't lead you well, who didn't manage you well. If you've had such an experience, think for a moment about that. What was it that that person did or said that led you to believe that in fact, in that situation, for that time, you were not managed well? Perhaps it was because <clears throat> they treated everybody the same and there was no recognition of you as an individual. Perhaps their management of you was, was unfair. Perhaps it was out of context. Perhaps it was because they didn't understand the bigger picture. Whatever reason it was, you've obviously remembered it because it was an unfortunate experience. Every single day, people are looking for leadership. They're looking for management. Leadership and management that is that is contemporary in terms of understanding their current context and their situation. We're going to be looking at various styles now. And while we're doing that, I want you to think about various situations and possibly say to yourself, well, in terms of what's being described, this would perhaps fit that situation better than the next. Essentially, the four main management styles are as follows. There's the classical approach to management, and this is typically um, an authoritarian-based approach to management. It relies and is governed by technical competence, and discipline is one of the key words that comes into the classical approach to management, and I'll tell you more about that shortly. The second management module that we'll be discussing, or approach if you prefer, is the human relations approach. This has a lot to do with social attitudes, relationships, work groups, etc. Thirdly, there's a systems approach to management. And we'll talk a little bit about um, social, technical skills, and the fact that this is really an integration of, of the classical management approach as well as the human relations uh, management approach. And then finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the contingency approach to management. So let's for a moment revert back to classical management approaches. Essentially, there are two areas which I'd like to cover here. The first being scientific and the second being administrative management. Scientific management was essentially fathered by Frederick W. Taylor. This is essentially the application of scientific methods to increase an individual worker's productivity. 
So what is scientific management exactly? Well, essentially, it's a clinical, it's an empirical examination of past management experiences. So typically, a manager or a leader who wants to use um, this classical approach called system management, uh, scientific management in terms of leading others, would really consider past experiences of people. There would be this evaluation, there would be this consideration of past successes and failures in terms of management experiences, and they would say things like this. Well, this has worked in the past. This is what happened in the past. Therefore, the current situation, we need to do this. Now, that has its uses, it has its advantages, but it certainly has its limitations as well. When you take information from the past and overlay it on, on the current context, it sometimes is perceived as being very autocratic and bureaucratic. It's, it doesn't allow for the uniquenesses and the nuances of the current situation. It's in fact really a study of these past experiences and essentially we need to recognize that past situations are not the same as current situations. So the learnings from the past might not necessarily apply now. Certainly they can be considered now, but they don't always apply. So scientific management in terms of an approach certainly has its limitations. It's useful, however, because you do learn from the experience of others. So sometimes it is better for us to learn from other people's experiences versus having to learn things firsthand. Um, you can learn by observing, you can learn by considering what other folk have been through, and therefore you can avoid certain things. So certainly there are the advantages as well as the disadvantages of the scientific approach. The second part of the classic approach to management is, the, is administrative management. And this was authored by Henry Fail, and essentially the, this is the use of management principles to efficiently structure and manage organizations. So what are those management principles? Well, it's things like low-level command and control skills, and we would recognize them um, by way of planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating, and controlling. So in our management style, we become very, very, very administrative. We, we tend to be very well um, organized, very well administrative. We're experts in this arena, and that's typically how we get things done, is through a tightening and a heightening of administrative controls. Another approach to management is one that most of us identify quite readily with, and it's known as the human relations approach. It draws heavily on psychology and sociology, and it's really an understanding of individual behavior as well as group behavior. So teachings such as group dynamics would fit in here, and typically this is, would, this is where participative management would find a home within the space of the human relations approach. It has its limitations, let me say that right up front, because somehow in the human relations approach we, te we, we tend often to see management um, as equivalent to human relations, and the truth is it's, they, they, they're not. We need to, management and human relations is not the same. Um, adopting a human relations approach has its benefits, but essentially um, sometimes in management we need to make tough calls. And so we need to be able to use the human relations approach to get results, but at the same time recognize that we need to be flexible and that we need to leverage it specifically not only in terms of treating people well, but in terms of making sure that we remain and are focused on business results. And essentially the human relations approach is based on the belief that managerial practices, morale and productivity are strongly linked and that the proper working environment enhances worker capabilities. So we're saying that these things are linked, and we're also saying that a, a conducive, proper working environment um, actually impacts worker capabilities. So that's really what's at the heart of the human relations approach. And the human relations approach was something that was um, penned by Alton Mayo and Abraham Maslow. And thirdly, we have the systems approach. The fact is this, is this systems approach to management can get complicated, can be expensive. It's essentially a combination of the classical approach as well as the human relations approach. Some pointers that would define and explain the systems approach with uh, quite succinctly would be the following. The systems approach is essentially a recognition that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts.
So in terms of managing uh, people, in terms of leading people, we pull both from classical, we pull both from human relations, recognizing the inter interdependencies and the connectedness of environment and people. The systems approach recognizes that the parts or subsystems are related to each other and to the whole. Emphasis is on close working relationships between the organization and the supporting environment. It also, as a systems approach, it also examines the predicted patterns of effectiveness. And the systems approach was something that, was a re that uh, Chester Barnard originally came up with. And then finally, we have the contingency approach. This approach takes the internal environment as well as the external environment into consideration. It's, a, it's an approach to management that goes beyond the traditional theory X and Y. And it's really related to the fact that when determining or deciding on employing a particular management style in a situation, you in fact would take the nature of the task and the nature of the person into consideration. So it's not just looking at the task, it's not just looking at the person. It's saying what needs to be achieved, who needs to achieve it, and then leveraging a management style that would facilitate success in that regard. So emphasis in the contingency approach is that there is no one best way to manage people. Different situations require managers to make decisions about managerial methods and approaches. Knowledge of organizational theory and management is essential before deciding a course of action. So certainly there are advantages that far outweigh the negative of contingency management. I think the contingency approach in terms of some of the negatives is that you need to think. You need to take time to actually consider the person, to consider the task in a little more detail. And then once you're clear about that, um, then say, well, what management style is actually going to be the best use of time, the best use of resources, the best use of energy as we seek to gain the results that uh, we desire to get. Thank you.